So she is this, obviously, the, the colleague of Harding when you meet her, and you don't really know where she's going or what her agenda is or what her real job is involved within uh, RST. And then within this, as the movie goes by, you start really finding out who she is and what her intentions are. And, and what I really loved about this character was that she was fully layered. You know, she didn't feel like just one tone, badass superhero girl. It was just this real girl who had issues and traumas and, and emotions. And there, there's no revenge story behind her. She just really wants to do what's right. And so it was very inspirational to me. And I also wanted to pay back my respect for the female soldiers that have you know, represented us in, in really hard moments. And, and I wanted to do it right. So I was very proud and excited to bring them to life. You know? He's this very good uh, ex Navy SEAL. I think uh, he was probably top of his top of his class, and uh, he's gone through this this horrific trauma. He's lost his legs, but through the RST, he's he's been enhanced, and uh, he has a, a second chance. But uh, yeah, he feels he feels angry at a lot of things. He's he's obviously upset that this has happened to him. Uh, he blames probably a lot of people. He blames the military. He blames Harding for not giving him this uh, this opportunity. And blames Ray for sort of taking away everything that he wants, including the technology and probably KT as well. And uh, yeah, he's got some issues, but uh, he's such a fun character to play. And uh, I really enjoyed it because he's, he's quite different to the characters I've played before. He's the smartest guy in the room. I think he, uh, just like today uh, but I I think he's uh, initially when you see this guy he's a keep his head down kind of person you know he's a, a schemer at heart um, which leads him to doing uh, some of the dirty work that he does um, with his superpower but you know maybe there's a, a master scheme uh, at play here for him and I think you know you, you watch the film you you know you'll see some of those things play out I, uh, I think him spending a lot of time alone has formed a lot of his ex extroverted uh, actions uh, that you that you would see. Obviously, obviously, people who get human interaction know how to behave, and with this guy in particular, he uh, doesn't. They've all got their certain roles to play, and they've been playing them successfully for some time now. We see that they've, he's gone on multiple missions and. Uh, and actually, um, you know, he's now down to his last few targets. But you can also see the the chinks in in their armor. They're human beings. They they're getting bored. They're getting frustrated and and uh, almost disillusioned by you know by the the mission at hand. I mean, you see in KT that she's certainly questioning why why they're doing this. Uh, and and for my character, I think Jimmy, you know, absolutely, he's he's sick of it. He's bored, and he he knows he thinks he could do a better job. So. Um, it's these little details that when we were shooting it, uh, it was kind of fun to do because we'd, we'd reshoot the same scene over a couple of times and you, you could mix it up slightly and you start to see when the characters, uh, the characters make mistakes. Because his memories are constantly being manipulated, if he does go off on his own, I could do stuff to him you know he has to become human he does have to have that human side to kind of tap into his own self more that technology being tapped into this web or whatever interface it's tapped into can still be manipulated I do think that that is the cool part about the cinematic experience of bloodshot you know what or who can get control of him mm -hmm. um, I, I think the soul of him though you know, there is a, 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 there would be a joy in him going off on his own because he, you know, he'd go and do the right thing and he'd, you know, be a lover and a fun person and all that stuff. But no, you got to tap into that brain and make him diabolical again. You know, that's what I would do. Um, I would use that power for 100% evil. Ray Garrison is this military guy that we kind of meet as we start in this movie and sort of is brought back to life by Harding with this nanotechnology to get a second chance at life. And he's kind of questioning where he comes from and who he is. And I think that that sort of unravels to what the story goes towards. And 
I think that this was just such an incredible role for Vin Diesel as well because I feel like he had never had the opportunity to be vulnerable to the level and the extent that he is in this film. And uh, it allows him to give other people an insightful version of who he can be as well as an actor. And it did such a service to Bloodshot as well because it, it is a real human trying to find his meaning in life now that he's had a second chance. And I think uh, it comes with a lot of things. It comes with rage and excitement and fear and emotions and um, doubts. And that's why I feel people will really relate to Bloodshot and really connect to him. He's not just a Terminator. He's not just this in superpower or Superman. He is this guy who has all these conflicts and is trying to go as, learn as he goes, but also trying to keep his humanity and that's what made such special splash to us to be part of Bloodshot. Watching this movie, it's so epic visually. I think Dave Wilson has done an incredible job. He, from day one, you know, knew exactly what he wanted to do. He's made these incredible computer games and just, he was the right man for the job. Uh, the action is incredible. Uh, the characters are really uh, interesting and uh, multifaceted. And honestly, you want to see this with everyone around you because you're going to watch it once and then you're going to go, I want to go watch it again. To Now you know the twist. You want to go back and, and, and see where those those uh, those little nest eggs, those little Easter, Easter eggs are. Eggs, yeah. Yeah. What really has defined Vin Diesel throughout his career is that when he had the shot to really make a difference, when he started his, what he would be his legacy as an actor, he really cared about breaking the mold in the sense of like being inclusive and he really represented a diversity and at the time and so Vin has done such a good job with expanding universes and the fact that he has dived into Bloodshot after being part of many 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 successful films and uh, different he's part of the Marvel world he's part of the Fast and Furious world and all these things was uh, just strong in the sense of allowing people to expand in that uh, actors to come in and do more and and allow them to have more layered roles and I think that everyone involved with within itself like the the studio behind it the director taking risks on these movies is really important and he I think was great for it as well because it allowed him to get to a different level that he hadn't gotten before and I think people will fall in love with him even more so and that just goes to show that no matter what stage of your career you are you can still reinvent yourself and do different stuff and show what you're capable of and we're all very grateful because we just created a whole new world with this film.